this is enclosed by a rigid body. And based on the velocity vector, we know that omega is rotating this way. For this case, we know that omega is rotating this way relative to the instantaneous center because the velocity vector, one is going towards the left and one is going towards the right. Okay. That's all the theory we need to know. And let's look at an example. Okay. So it's really uh, straightforward, nothing difficult. Okay, so let's look at example number one. Question so far from anyone, please? Yes, Sylvie. It has to be. Okay, uh, wait, 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 I have to be. It can be outside when it's a multi-body link. Later on, when we look at the example, it's more obvious, okay? But when in a gear train system, it has to be within a body, okay? Right, so let's look at this example over here. Okay, so let's look at this example over here. I just I just post this example on Avenue to Learn uh, before class start. Now I'm I, I I forgot. Did I start recording? I did. Okay. So let's look at this first example. Okay. Now this can be solved with the technique that we learned before, right? But now we are going to use we're going to apply okay we're going to apply you've seen this example before yes or no it looks familiar right no i think it looks familiar maybe i did too many questions we're going to apply the instantaneous center method okay so given to us, right, that block C is moving upwards, okay, upwards by 12 inches per second. Okay, so, so we know that. So I'm going to construct the, the green line, okay? So, okay, I'm going to construct the velocity vectors first okay so we know that this is going up right we know that this is going up by 12 inches per second and the next thing that we know right is we have a line down here right I'm going to draw this first, and then I'm going to rotate by 90 degrees. Where's the right? And we know that we have a what? We have a VB over here. Okay, we have a VB over here. So the next thing that we're going we're going to do is we are going to join. VC, okay, VC, okay, we're going to create the 90 degrees line to determine the instantaneous axis, okay? So I'm going to draw in green now, okay? So I'm going to sketch in green how to do the instantaneous center. So we know that this is going to be straight line, right? And we know that from here, this is the location. Okay, hold on. Undo, and then I draw. This is the location of the instantaneous center. Now, you okay? Yep. No? Which part not okay?
when they intersect is where the intersection is. Right? No? Okay, okay, okay. Yes. Because omega AB is here, and they say VC is going up. Right? Okay, I, I, I'll, I'll do it again, okay? Focus on the screen. No writing. Okay, I'll delete this. Okay. Listen, this, this method, I know. If you see something so simple, you're like, seriously, Eugene, right? I was also the same, like, seriously, okay? And it's amazing. This simple technique, it works, okay? It shocked the hell out of me, okay? I'll, I'll show you why later on, okay? So we know VC is going up, yes or no? We construct a 90 degrees line. Okay, so I'm going to construct the 90 degrees line in grid. Nothing different from what I've done before. Okay, I've done 90 degrees. Anyone dispute that line? Why do we need to do that? Because up here, we have been drawing what? 90 degrees line over here, 90 degrees line over here, 90 degrees line over here, 90 degrees line over here. And over here, we've been doing 90 degrees line, 90 degrees line, 90 degrees line. Yes or no? So not, nothing new. Okay. Then the next one is we look at VB, and we know VB is in that orientation because omega AB is going in what direction? Anticlockwise direction. Yes? So from here, right, again, we draw another 90 degrees line. So to draw a 90 degrees line, I do control C, control V. I, you, for you, no need control C, control V. You can just use your protractor, okay? So now I need to draw another green line. Green line. Okay? From here to here. Can you see that now? And where and where the two points, uh, when the two green line intersect, this point over here, this point over here is known as our what? Our instantaneous what? Center. Okay. So now we know this distance over here. Okay. This distance over here is our R B. I see. And then this distance for this distance is equal to our RC instantaneous center. Are we okay? Right. Why are we doing this for? Okay. Why are we doing this for? Okay. This is because we know that to find omega AB, right, we, we want to determine. Sorry, I get too excited, okay? I do apologize. We're going to determine omega AB, right? We're going to determine omega AB. So to do that, we need to find, we to find that we need to know what is our VB is equal to omega AB multiplied by our RAB. Okay. This is the only way. So we need to find what is our what? What is our VB? Right? We know what is our VC. Yes or no? Okay. So now you ask me, Eugene. Sylvie asked, sorry, your name is Sylvie, right? Sylvie asked, A single body, was it a single body is the rigid body, am I right? And and I say not necessary three can be multi-body. Okay. So you can see that we have multi-rigid body. You have A B and B C are your what? Are your rigid body. Yes or no? So if you if you realistic look at this, we know that the rigid body. Are uh, what? Are your A, B, and where? And your B, C. They are your rigid body. However, when you apply the, the instantaneous center concept, okay, I want you to watch this, okay? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to 
can I do this? I'm going to so-called draw, okay? So this is my IC. Over here is my point C. And down here is my point B, right? Okay, so we also know that these are all our velocity vectors. I'm going to sketch them out. So we know that this is our VC. And now this is our what? This over here is our VB. And we also know that this over here. And this over here. Are our 90 degrees line. The rigid body concept comes in here. Now, with these three points, this is our rigid body. Just those three points to look at the instantaneous center. And the instantaneous center will change with what? Time. Why do I say that? Come on, why do I say it will change with time? This is because at a certain time, if point C ended up up here, let's say point C ended up up here. Now this is our C prime. Will our instantaneous uh, point be the same? It will change. Are we clear? Okay, so whatever, that's, that's why for a question like that, they always specify, okay, you, you, this, this, this is interesting. They, they always specify the what? At the instant what? That you see now on the diagram. Are we clear? Okay. Yes. It has to be. Because the AB length is the radius. Yes or no? Right? It cannot diverge anywhere. Okay, good question, by the way. Okay? It cannot translate because point A is pin. If point A is not pin, I agree with you. Okay? Don't change the question, you cheeky sword. <laughs> okay? <laughs> it's too complex for me, okay? So now we, we, we know all this now, right? We know all this now, okay? So, okay, so we know that this angle over here is 45. So if we look at angle wise, this angle is 45, am I right? Right, and if that is 30, this angle is what? This angle is 45, 180 minus by 90. So this angle over here will be 60. Right, we know this angle is 60, right? And then we know this angle over right here. So 45 plus 45 plus by 60 minus 180. We know this angle over here is 30 degrees, okay? So what are we trying to determine down here? We are trying to find our R or our distance Right, our distance are uh, ICC and also our distance ICB. Okay, so we are going to look at our uh, IC, ICC or so, so not ICC, so we can we can look at this so. Sine 45 over 4 is equal to sine 30 over ICB. And this will be equal to sine uh sine what 60 plus 45 is uh 105 sine 105 is it over ic okay and if i were to rewrite this this can also be equal to sine 30 over icb is uh, uh, rb ic and this is going to sign 105 over 
RC over IC. Okay. So now we can find our RB over IC. Okay. So this will be equal to sine 30 